little boy. Uh, he used to call himself Boise, and it was converted to Bosey. So really and truly, it originated from him as a little boy saying, Bo Boise wants. You see, and they said, oh, it's Bosey, we'll call you Bosey. And it stuck with him all his life. He was born in 1870 into one of the richest and most important families in Scotland. His mother doted on him. He adored his mother. And he was of an artistic temperament. And she was a very intelligent and artistic lady. And they got on very well together. His mother was a very beautiful woman. I think she found Scotland very lonely, didn't you, John? She did. The Marquis of Queensbury, their father, he was a dreadful man because he took his mistresses to his wife in front of his wife. And he had no respect for her and she'd been brought up very strict. The only reason it seems that Queensbury was not more despised by his sons was that Lady Queensbury, actually, um, to her enormous credit, kept from her sons exactly what a brute their father was. You were a brute and more than half the name. Your mind was seamed with labyrinthine tracks, wherein walked crazy moods bending their backs under grim loads. You were an open grave for gold and love. Always you were the slave of crooked thoughts, tortured upon the racks of mean mistrust. Uh, my name is Lord Gawain I Douglas. I'm the son of the um, 11th Marquess of Queensbury, one of the last in a long line of Douglases. Famous, of course, for the Black Douglas um, from 1390. And he was such a terrifying warrior in his time that um, the mothers used to warn their children by saying a little rhyme to them when they wanted them to be quiet which was um, if I remember it correctly hush thee, hush thee, dinner fret thee, lest the black Douglas come and get thee and of course the Douglases have been pretty black through all history and only in recent years have they become a bit more moderate we have Melanie Marshall Christchurch and Merlin Holland Maudlin. In opposition, we have James Williams, St. John's College, Lord Gawain Douglas. So without further ado, I call upon Merlin Holland Maudlin. Well, who am I? I suppose I'm a collection of genes which has come down the centuries and uh, Oscar was my grandfather and he died 45 years before I was born. I never knew him, and it was only 20 years ago, when I was about 30, that I felt this urge to go out and try and find him. However, um, I speak to you from the crossbenches tonight because I don't feel capable of condemning either my grandfather or Lord Alfred Douglas for their behavior. Each man kills the thing he loves. Did Bosie, my dear great uncle, destroy Oscar Wilde in that sense? Well, I put it to you that it could just be convincing nonsense. Now, anyone who has ever been ruinously infatuated would understand that to escape from that ruinous infatuation is not an easy thing. That the very opposite might be more true, that most people enhance the things they love, and that Alfred Douglas came a long way from ruining Oscar Wilde. I think the whole Wilde-Douglas story 
which has an endless fascination, is based on a sense of the Greek tragedy which Wilde so well understood, the impossibility of escape from your own fate. The picture of Dorian Gray was now out in book form. Bosey claimed to have read it um, between sort of eight and 14 times running um, before meeting Wilde. If only the picture could change, I could be always what I am now. For that, I would give everything. Well, Dorian Gray essentially is the story of a young man who has his picture painted, sees the beauty of himself in the picture, and regrets the fact that he will have to grow old and the picture will remain as he is at the age of 20 or whatever. Yes, there's nothing in the whole world I would not give. I would give my soul. He has made a sort of Faustian pact with the devil that he will remain young and the picture will age. It's a gothic novel, it's a sort of surreal story. It was almost in Oscar Wilde's case as if he had seen the... He had created an image, he had created a person in Dorian Gray, a myth. And he then sought out the person who could be that myth, put it into flesh. On the surface, you have this um, uh, brattish, arrogant... Um, Impetuous. Aristocratic. Difficult. Violent. Egotist. Person who always has to have what he wants all the time. But again, I think Oscar may have found some of those bad sides, if you like to call them that, also quite attractive. It gave him character. He wasn't just a, an insignificant, charming, beautiful young man. He had, he had character too, but it was a very dangerous character. Well, all poets are mad, so the, you know, there has to be a very strong link there, and most of the Douglases were mad. But um, I think the closer you go down the field of art, the closer you get to um, something not not properly sane. A purple robe he wore, all wrought in gold, with the device of a great snake, whose breath was fiery flame, whose breath was fiery flame. Which when I did behold, I fell a-weeping and cried, Sweet youth, Tell me why, sad and sighing, thou dost rove. It tumbled into this intense and passionate love affair, Sweet youth. which neither were really able to get out of. Tell me why, sad and sighing, thou dost roam these pleasant realms. I pray thee, speak me sooth. I pray thee, speak me sooth. What is thy name? I pray thee, speak me sooth. What is thy name? He said, my name is love. They, well, I mean, they, they went everywhere together, but not all together. Um, went to, went to, did they go to Paris together at that time? There must have been many, many days on end where they enjoyed each other's company, intelligent literary work, um, painting, music. He said, my name is love. Then straight the first did turn himself to me and cried, he lieth, for his name is shame. He lieth, for his name is shame. But I am love, and I was wont to be alone in this fair garden till he came unasked by night. Their relationship can only be said to have spiralled or snowballed um, into this uh, tragic finale in 1895, and then, of course, the whole relationship changes. Um, and doesn't really finish until Alfred Douglas's death, because in so many ways, um, Alfred Douglas kept a love or, um, of some kind for Wilde for almost a half century after Wilde's death. But I am love, and I was wont to be alone in this fair garden till he came, unasked by night. Um, and it was only with his death that the whole relationship actually stopped. I am true love. I fill the hearts of boy and girl with mutual flame. Then, sighing, said the other, Have thy will. I am the love that dare not speak its name. 